guys, Courtney Michelle here, and today we're doing a triple header. We're going to do three things today. We're going to start off by making our fried chicken with our honey glaze. Then we're going to make some asparagus, and then we're going to make some crab deviled eggs. I hope you guys are ready to get down and dirty. We're going to simply start by just seasoning our chicken. I have some adobo here. You want to just coat all of it, make sure all the chicken is covered. I have about 15 chicken wings here. Then I have some garlic and herb seasoning that has no salt in it. Just make sure everything is just covered. Then we have some pepper. Just sprinkle, sprinkle. And then just a little salt. And now we're going to mix it all together. I already cleaned my chicken. That's why it's some water at the bottom. And it's you can have some water at the bottom. Don't, don't think they have to be like totally dry because they don't. We're going to fry these up, then we're going to make our glaze. It's going to be like a little spicy glaze, a little sweet glaze, so it's going to be best of both worlds. So after they're all coated, and they don't have to be have too much seasoning on them because the seasoning and the flavor is going to come right from our glaze, which is going to be the first thing you taste, and you're going to be wowed. I already have our oil on behind me to about 350 degrees. I'm going to make sure it's nice and hot. And I can already tell it's hot because it's bubbling a little. So we simply just take a chicken wing, coat the entire thing in flour, and then dip it in. This right here makes a good crispy fried chicken. You don't all, you don't all the time need eggs and all that things. Just the liquid from the cleaning the chicken and then the flour makes an awesome coating. Nice and crispy. And we're going to keep doing that until the whole entire pan is full. With chicken, you do not want to crowd the pan. because, And you don't want them to touch because the skin can easily rub off, rub off and we do not want that. We want the nice crispy fried skin on there. So we're coating them all. I have about five more that can fit in this bag. And then we're going to immediately start on our glaze. A couple more can fit in there. Again, you don't want to crowd the paint pot too much. Because we want the crispiness to come from the flour. And we don't want it to rub against each other. Because it can come off. So you put them in there. The last one is going to fit in this stuff. It's nice and bubbly. Now we're going to sit those aside because now we're going to start our glaze. Let me eat. You want to always wash your hands after dealing with meat because it can get very dirty. So now we're going to stop, start our glaze on top. We're going to do a stove top. We're going to put it right in our bowl. So we're going to start by melting a whole stick of margarine. You can also use butter. Put it right on medium heat. Slap it right in there. We want that to melt all the way down. Then we're going to add our other wonderful ingredients. We're going to add about two tablespoons of brown sugar. We're not going to add that until everything, all of our cheese, I mean, sorry, all of our butter is melted. That's something you don't want to leave the room for also because chicken tends to fry for about, let's say, 7 to 10 minutes. But you want to keep an eye on it. Since they're all fully covered, you don't have to flip it. But if you did just do oil that's, and they're not covered, all you have to do is flip it to make sure each side is evenly coated. And you, of course you want to make sure the inside is done too. So our butter, our margin is over here melting. So it's just about melted. I'm going to make sure that gets all the way down before we add our brown sugar. So it's, going to be, it's going to be a great toss between sweet and hot. So if you don't like hot stuff, it, it is going to have a sweet taste to it. So 
butter just about disappeared. Shouldn't take longer than a minute or two to melt down. Now we're going to add about two tablespoons of brown sugar. Give us two tablespoons there. And you want to stir it immediately just to get that all dissolved. And instantly it's going to make kind of a syrupy type feel. So that's all stirred together. Now we're going to season it a little with some garlic. Just a teaspoon is good. Then we're going to add some honey. About a half a cup of honey. I'm going to eyeball it. You can measure it first. Close it up to you. About a half a cup there. And now we're going to add our hot sauce. Now, you may get afraid because you see that I'm kind of using a lot of hot sauce. But again, Everything is going to weigh out each other. So right here, I'm going to do it by half a cup increment. So I'm going to start with just a half a cup. And then we're going to do another half. And this sauce is pretty mild already. You can use red hot. You can use regular hot sauce. It just depends really on how hot you like it. And let's stir that up. Make sure all the honey is dissolving, all the brown sugar is dissolving. You can use a spoon. Just make sure everything is getting in there. It's a pretty color already. I want to add some blue cheese. A lot of these things are things that you would find on, you know, dipping your wings in anyway. So I'm just going to make it a coating so you only have to dip it. So that was about a quarter cup of blue cheese. I'm going to mix that up. Now I'm going to let all that get down and get it in there. Then we're going to add our dry ranch seasoning. Then we're simply done. You can add the entire packet of that. That won't hurt us at all. Stir. It's all about stirring. And you just want to make it until it gets nice and smooth. And you can actually test taste it just to see what you think you need more of. Or you can leave it as is. If you want it more sweet, add more sugar. If you want it more hot, add more hot sauce. So I'm going to get that nice and dissolved. You want to get a, uh, you want to get a spoon that has holes in it so you can lift it if you need to. Now you can move them around, I mean, well they're moving around on their own actually. And this is a time where you see that there's more space in your pot. That does not mean add more chicken because if you add more chicken, the grease will, the temperature of the grease will decrease and it's going to take longer and it's actually really not good for the chicken that's already in there because it'll, you know, you're, you're messing with its mind. It's going from hot to cold. You don't want to keep adding chicken because it will change the temperature. So our sauce is over here bubbling up. And I'm going to add just a little bit more honey because I want the kind of sticky look and feel. Just a little bit more. That's going to be some good sauce for our wings. They're going to be nice and crispy. Then you're going to soak them in our sauce. Yeah, more honey. Great. We're about to put them right in this bowl here. 
A chicken still has a good timing to it. Well, good amount of time left. And if you don't have honey, you can use syrup. But the honey gives us that nice honey feel and honey taste. You can bring that down to a low simmer. And you can leave it uncovered. It's not a problem. Chicken is coming along. So when we come back, we're going to have our chicken ready to come out. Then we're going to coat it. And then we're going to, we can sit it in the oven so it can, you know, so it can stay warm and get, you know, the taste can seep down to the chicken. Or you can serve it as it as is. So when we get back, we're going to have our chicken ready to dip. Welcome back guys. Our fried chicken is now golden brown, so we're going to take it out and get it ready for our coating. See, it's, this chicken is nice and crispy and all I used was flour. I didn't necessarily need the, you know, the cornmeal or anything like that to make it crispy. It's already crispy from simply flour. And we all have flour in our refrigerator or wherever you keep it. So you can make fried chicken right at home. And now we're going to coat them. Set them right. Make sure you put them on a paper towel so the grease can go down in there. We have our glaze that we made on the stove top. It's still nice and hot. I'm not going to keep it in this bowl. I'm going to actually put it in a nice, you know, a little pie dish, actually. So you're going to put it in there. No, don't put all of it in there. Just about half. And this is the way we can coat our chicken. You can get a pair of tongs. I'm going to turn your oil off now if you're not going to put the chicken right in there. I'm actually going to put a second batch in there. You can get a pair of tongs or you can do it with your hands. Just simply put it in there, get it all, rub, rub it all around, and take it right out. That simple. Put it in there, rub it around. And you guys are going to love this sauce. It'll actually please the crowd. It's not too hot and it's not too sweet. Just make sure all sides are coated. And like I said, you can serve as is. You can serve it just like this, or you can put them right. You can put them right in the oven, just on about 300, just so it can you know bake into it or get a little bit less moist than it is. Flip it around. Now, if I wasn't about to start our asparagus, I would do this by hand. I don't mind getting a little dirty in the kitchen. You're going to love these wings. And there's our wings there. Now, we're going to start. We're going to put our, everything aside. We're going to start on our asparagus. Asparagus doesn't take long at all. I already washed my asparagus. I'm not going to need all that. About a handful. And you want to cut the bottoms, the bottom stems off because that's really the tough part. And actually you can dispose of them. Throw those right in the garbage can. So just cut the stems. They're a little white. So that's how you can tell which part you're cutting off. About two inches on the bottom. And I already have a little bit of water simmering over here. Just cover the bottom. And you can put your asparagus right in there. And you can season your water with salt, a little bit of butter and garlic. I'm just going to use a little bit of margarine. Just to season the water a little bit. And you can use some salt. Everyone up. A little bit of salt sprinkling on there. And then we're going to cover it. Cover aluminum foil so it can steam. And you want to keep 
asparagus. You don't want to cook asparagus too long because you don't want it to get too soft. You want it to still have that good crunch, that good healthy crunch. So I'm going to get some more prepared. Cut the stems down again. And if you want to be daring, you could actually just, you know, steam this asparagus and coat it with the glaze that you use for your chicken. Give it a nice, you know, new feel. And not just boring asparagus. I'm going to add just a little bit more in there. Our margin is melting down, which is what we want. I'm going to put the fire back on because we're going to make some more chicken. That's not enough for our party. Can't keep it down. I just turned it off not too long ago, but I'm still going to wait for it, it to heat up just about, not even a minute, a couple seconds. So I'm going to get our chicken ready again. Coat them up. You can do a couple at a time in a bowl. You can even use a bag of flour. Just make sure you coat the entire thing. So I can give it that good crunch. And then we're going to make our doubled eggs very, very soon. So after we put these in, I'm going to have them cook a little. Let's see if the oil is ready. Yep, it's hot already. Let's get these in there. Make some more fried chicken. Everyone loves a good fried chicken. So we're going to get these in here, and when we come back, we're going to start on our crab double eggs. Stay tuned, guys. going on we're going to make our crab deviled eggs. I already boiled my eggs. I used six eggs because I have a tray of 12 here. I already cut them in half and split them. This is how you, I did that. You just cut it this way here. Open it up. Well this one was, I was lucky enough to get that. You just take, remove the yolk. You can, you can pull back a little bit or you just use a knife and put it right in there. And put it right on your tray. Then you have to mush up your yolks a little. You can use a mashed potato mush Musher or anything like that. Just get it in nice small yellow pieces. Then you're going we're going to add our mayo, our crab meat, and some a little bit of salt, some old bay. Because these are gonna be kind of seafood based. Since they're gonna have the crab in them, we've got to make sure they taste like make sure this crab meat is nice and seasoned with the old bay. So as long as they look like crumbles, like this here, nice and crumbled, that's done. And we're going to put some mayo in there. Pretty much can eyeball the mayo, which means, you know, you literally eyeball it. I'd say about a half a cup to start we'll off with. And if we need some more, we can add more. Add about a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to add our crab meat. Leg crab meat. Let me have some nice crab meat. We're going to need some more mayo. Then we're going to add about a tablespoon of scallions. You can use chives. People use chives often. I'm going to use the fork to start mixing it around first. Just make sure everything gets evenly distributed all around here. And that's enough mayo, actually. We don't need any more. A little bit of Old Bay. So I say about a half a cup of mayo, or you can actually do a little bit over a quarter cup. And 
and that's finished. You can get a spoon and scoop it right on out to your deviled eggs. And then our plate is ready to make. Put that to the side. And then you just get not even the whole spoonful and just scoop it on in there. Then you can refrigerate these so the moist so the mixture inside can get a little bit more sturdy. Put it right in there. Put them in. And then you do this whole entire tray. Then you season with some paprika on top. Okay. Just sprinkle some paprika, not too much, just pretty much for decoration. Doesn't have too much of a taste when it comes to deviled eggs. And voila, you've made crab deviled eggs. Now let's get our plate ready. Let's get some asparagus out. Nice and green with that nice bite still. Our chicken is still over there cooking. Then we're going to get some wings. This will be good for a nice picnic outside or even in the winter. And then our crab deviled eggs. And now it's time to chow down. Guys, we are done. This trio did not take long at all. It took maybe, maybe 45 minutes at the most. And we have our green, we have our orange, and we have our nice color there. And we have a colorful meal, nice and nutritious, with a nice little crunch and sweet. And then some salt over here from our crab double eggs. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next week. snowstorm that hit the northern part of our state and there's a lot of devastation a lot of people wanting to respond to help the people that have been uh, in the weather disasters that we've had in the last two weeks and so um, I want to show you one way that's real simple to help another way you can help is to be trained to be an early response person and then there's a, a third way and that's just check out your neighbors and, and talk to them and listen to them and, and don't particularly offer any specific hope for them that you're going to help them out but be there and listen to them because they, they need some friends who can listen to them and, uh, and help out but the biggest problem we've had is floods and this here is called a flood bucket or a mud bucket or a cleanup bucket and it's and we are always collecting these things. We're probably going to need about 10,000 of these 
in the next month. Uh, and then there are warehouses that uh, we just keep stocking with these things. And they can be used all over the country uh, to help people. So I want to go through the flood bucket and show you some of the stuff in it and, um, and just give you an idea of what is involved. And then if you want to get a list, you can contact, uh, go online to uh, UMCOR, U-M-C-O-R, and they have a list there, uh, easy to uh, link to uh, give you the whole list of what's in a flood bucket and how do you pack it. And then it goes to, just contact the Methodist Church. We have two collection sites in uh, southern New Jersey right now in, in our area uh, of southwestern New Jersey, and there's another big site uh, in the Ocean City area. But first thing, wipes. Now these are those uh, absorbent cloth wipes. Uh, it's usually better if they're not in the in the wrapping because more trash for people to get rid of when they're cleaning up. But uh, the cloth wipes, not the um, cellulose wipes or the sham things because they also collect a whole lot of uh, um, bacteria and things and then they start growing mold and then they're, they're more of a problem. But those cloth wipes you can buy in the store. Um, clothesline. You need about 100 feet of clothesline because people are drying things out, need to hang them up and, and just keep things off the floor. Um, sponges with the scrub pad on the back. Uh, we can't take any scrub pads like Brillo, SOS that are metal, but the plastic kind of scrub pads and sponges. Basic, uh, like dish detergent, cleaning detergent. Um, let's get some more sponges out of here. And then clothes pins. Clothes pins are like needed uh, to help hang things up. And then we have uh, gloves. The gloves actually, these should have a leather palm. These don't, but uh, we need gloves. The, the two pairs of cloth gloves and then some of the rubber gloves uh, that just for uh, cleaning up stuff and keeping your hands from getting infected with things. Uh, I've got some all-purpose cleaner in here. Deodorizer. More of the scouring pads, the little masks to put over your face, because uh, there you go. Once you get the um, mold starting to grow, you need these masks, and, and then we've got all the sanitation stuff from sewers overflowing and things like that. So you need the masks, big garbage bags. And then a good scrub brush, not a toilet brush, but a regular scrub brush. And for the pads, these aren't on the list, but ties so you can tie up the trash bags. They, they come with the trash bag. And then laundry detergent, because these folks are going to have lots of stuff that's going to need to be washed and and laundry detergent. This is what somebody's going to need in the first week or two after they've been flooded out. Um, they are not going to need a lot of clothes because they don't have any place to put the clothes. They're not going to need um, a whole lot of frozen turkeys and stuff like that. They don't have any place to put them. If you have canned goods, meals ready to eat are always good. But this is a basic flood bucket. It comes with a resealable lid. And, um, and it just uh, is the stuff that people really need to get started uh, as they clean up after a flood. And so I hope that helps you out a little bit. Go to UMCOR and get the uh, more information and
Contact your local United Methodist Church. They can tell you where to deliver the buckets and the items. And it might be that you don't want to have people get all of these different things, but one person might want to get a case of laundry detergent, another person a case of scouring pads, another person a case of sponges, and, um, and then you can put them all together or you can uh, and, and ship them all out that way. Um, and right now we've got lots of sites where we can pick the stuff up so you don't have to mail them or deliver them. Uh, help us out. Help a friend out. God bless you.